Shopping for a new laptop is a huge hassle because the specs change every single year and they're always just a whole bunch of numbers, numbers, and more numbers. So we hop on YouTube to see what somebody like me has to say about it. One second before you jump ahead to the laptops though, I want you to get the best laptop for architecture school and I wanna save you as much time and money as possible. In order to do this though, there are three extremely important things that we need to consider. I've tested every architecture program that we use in architecture school, and something that you're really gonna want is a really powerful GPU, otherwise known as a graphics card. The GPU is really important for 3D modeling, rendering, drafting, drawing, and much more. We want a good CPU, which is the boss and brains of the computer. The last thing that you're gonna wanna know before we hop into the laptops is you're gonna want one with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. Everything on the list has this, I just want you to know that moving forward. RAM is short for random access memory, and this is what's gonna make your computer really responsive and really Your screen size and the amount of memory that you have in your laptop usually shouldn't be a deal breaker for you. You will probably buy a second monitor later on, and as far as memory goes, usually 512 gigabytes is just fine. And if you wanna upgrade later, you can. I scoured the internet for the best deal on these laptops and I've linked them down below in the description. Check them out. Enough talk, let's go ahead and jump right in. I broke everything down into four parts. We have the budget tier, the medium tier, the pro tier, and then finally, the Starkitect tier. The Acer Nitro 5, in my opinion, reign supreme and the budget tier. Also, if you can catch one on sale, it's a huge plus. This laptop is absolutely perfect for the architecture student or young professional who's on a budget, but needs something that's powerful enough that'll get the job done efficiently and on time. The Acer Nitro 5 has an Intel i7 CPU, a strong graphics card for 3D modeling. It's got a decent storage size at 512 gigabytes and a standard 15 and a half inch full HD screen with 144 Hertz refresh rate. This laptop is actually made for gaming, but lucky for us architecture people, that's exactly what we need in a laptop. The 512 gigabytes of storage on your computer isn't enough. I would opt in and grab yourself one of these portable storage drives. Next in the medium tier is the ASUS ROG Strix G15. It's an amazing laptop for the price and comes in all different kinds of flavors and specs to choose from. The build that I would highly suggest though sits around $1,200. It's a very powerful laptop and it has a lot of functionality and speed that'll get you through anything that architecture school sends your way. It's got a Ryzen 7 CPU, an NVIDIA RTX 3050 GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and one whole terabyte of storage, which is actually double what the budget tier laptop had in it. It's got a 15.6 inch IPS full HD screen with the whopping 300 Hertz refresh rate. Now with the 300 Hertz refresh rate, on your screen, you're never gonna need that, especially with an architecture program. But if you like do happen to drop out of architecture school and you wanna start streaming video games, it's perfect. But we don't want you to drop out and you probably won't if you have this laptop because it'll keep your classmates struggling to keep up with you. And our top tier laptop, I think is probably the most popular laptop in architecture school. It's extremely lightweight, functional, it's nicely designed, and it's set at a pretty nice price point for what it has. This laptop is called the Dell XPS 17. I would highly recommend the build with the Intel i7 CPU, the Nvidia RTX 3050, the 32 gigabytes of RAM, so it's really snappy, one terabyte of storage, and then a dominating 17 inch Ultra HD touchscreen. And last but not least is the all time reigning champ my favorite laptop of all time, the Razer Blade 17. This thing is sick. I've always wanted the Razer Blade 15 and they actually just dropped the Razer Blade 17. So yeah, I'm really interested in it. Again, it's linked below and hopefully one day I can snag one so I can actually do a review on this channel. I think that would be awesome and it would help a lot of people out. The cool thing is it actually somewhat looks like a Mac from a distance when I was in architecture school. I saw somebody uh, across studio and they were using one and I thought it looked really cool and unique. I thought it was a new MacBook Pro or something. So I walked over, turned out it was a Razer Blade 17. And in my opinion, it looks better than the MacBooks. And also it's much more powerful in many ways. If you actually have one already or you end up purchasing one because of this video, please let me know in the comments below because I want to hear all about it. But also if it's a negative view, just please be careful because it's my dream. Please don't crush my dreams.
If you are dead set on an Apple though, I have two suggestions for you. One, go ahead and pick up the most powerful MacBook Pro you can, because if you're gonna run architecture programs, you just wanna get the best of the best. And also the MacBook will last you well into your future. My second suggestion is maybe picking up an iPad and you can get one of those cases that doubles as a keyboard and then also an Apple Pencil so that you can sketch. It's pretty nice because the iPads are super portable and if you have the keyboard and an Apple Pencil, I mean, you have your sketchbook and your portable laptop right there. Of course, you're not gonna be running any like 3D modeling or rendering programs off of it, but maybe smaller apps like Photoshop or Lightroom, you know, things like that. Also, I made a course for Morfolio Trace, which is on the iPad. If you're interested, I'll link that in the description below as well. If you like the video, please like the video and consider subscribing down below to see future content just like this. And up there and down there are two videos that I think you'll really like. And right here is a list of patrons that support this channel. Patreon is where creative thinkers and makers like yourself can support a small architecture channel like this one. It's as little as $3 and you get a lot of great architecture related benefits for architecture school.